This videotape will show you the common methods of turning a radius on a workpiece. In machine shop terminology, a radius refers to the rounding of a sharp corner or edge to produce a concave or convex shape. There are many methods of turning a radius. However, in this videotape, you will see the five more commonly used methods. Using forming tools, hand manipulation, using a radius attachment, using a radius rod, and using the compound rest. After viewing this videotape, you should be able to describe the safety procedures to follow when you are in a machine shop, as well as those required for turning a radius on a workpiece, and describe the steps in setting up a lathe to turn a radius on a workpiece using forming tools, hand manipulation, radius attachment, radius rod, and compound rest methods. The machine shop can be an accident-free work area if you take the necessary precautions to protect yourself and others around you. Always wear safety glasses. Take off all jewelry, such as watches and rings, and wear your sleeves above the elbow. Always check all your setups on the lathe for clearance of moving parts before engaging the clutch. The reasons why you would machine a radius on a workpiece are to reduce safety hazards of sharp edges, making it easier to assemble close-fitting parts, providing a decorative finish to a workpiece, or simplifying problems of heat treatments. You can grind a forming tool to produce whatever shape or form you desire. The shape of the cutting edge of the tool corresponds to the shape you desire on the workpiece. The tool must also have the proper relief and rake angle. The forming tool is most useful when you want to quickly and accurately machine many duplicate pieces. In order to machine a concave radius, you need to select a convex shaped tool ground to the desired radius with the proper relief and rake angles. When you have to machine a convex radius, you need to select a concave shaped tool ground to the desired radius and also with the proper relief and rake angles. The radius gauge is a useful instrument to check the radius of the forming tool, as well as the radius machined on the workpiece. This demonstration will cover how you make a radius on the outside edge of a faced workpiece. Set up a concave cutting tool bit in a straight tool holder. Align the holder in the tool post so that the cutting tool is at center height of the workpiece and in a position to produce the desired radius on the end of the workpiece. Forming tools require a slower cutting speed than straight turning tools because there is more of the tool in contact with the work. High speeds would create excessive heat and wear of the tool bit. You can make a good estimate of the spindle speed to use in turning a radius by starting at one half the straight turning RPM for the material. If the tool bit begins showing signs of overheating during the forming operation, reduce the speed. If the form radius does not have a smooth finish, increase the speed. Blue the end of the work, and by setting a homorphodite caliper to the desired dimensions, mark the lines on the work to tell when the radius is formed to the proper size. Engage the clutch and carefully bring the tool into cutting position using the cross feed and carriage hand wheels. The radius turning process will be much easier if you move one of the controls slightly to allow only a part of the forming tool to make contact with the work while using the other control to size the radius. Never jam the tool bit into the work end. This could break the tool bit and cause undesirable tool marks on the finish. When you have turned the radius to the marked size, disengage the clutch and check for accuracy with a radius gauge. This radius checks out favorably. 
In this operation, you will see the steps in machining a concave radius on the outside diameter of a workpiece. For this concave radius, you will be using a convex cutting tool ground to a 5 16th inch radius. It will be 1 inch from the end of the work and 3 16th inches wide. Your first step is to make a stripe with bluing approximately an inch from the end. Set the homorphodite calipers at one inch and mark a line around the surface of the work. Reset the calipers to one and three sixteenth inches and mark a second line to lay out the width of the radius. Your next step is to set the convex tool bit in a straight tool holder. Secure it in the tool post with the cutting edge of the tool aligned to the center height of the work. Then set your RPM at one half the speed you calculated for straight turning that type of material. Now you engage the clutch, and move the tool bit into cutting position. Be careful that you do not run the tool bit outside of the two marked lines. Here are some tips you should observe to make this operation easier. Move the tool bit back and forth between the scribed lines on the workpiece by turning the carriage hand wheel very carefully. At the same time, move the tool bit into the work with a cross feed. When the tool bit touches both mark lines at the same time, the radius is cut to size. Disengage the clutch. And check the work. Use a scale to check for distance from the end and width of groove. They measure one inch and three sixteenth inches respectively. Use a radius gauge to check the accuracy of the groove. The gauge shows a five sixteenth inch radius. Hand manipulation or free hand is another method you can use to machine a radius. This method is frequently used on outside corners of work pieces where the size of the radius is not critical. This method can only be developed by practice. The skilled operator can perform this operation both quickly and accurately. Secure a faced workpiece in the chuck, set the RPM to the finishing speed for that particular diameter and cutting foot speed. Set up a right hand finishing tool in the straight tool holder. Adjust the tool bit to the center height of the work. And position the center of the nose radius on a line approximately 45 degrees from the faced end. Tighten the holder in the tool post. With the tool bit in this position, you can make light cuts in both directions. Engage the clutch and blow the edge of the work. In order to make the layout for a 3 32nd inch radius on the gauge, use your homorphodite calipers and scribe two lines, one on the outside surface, 3 32nd of an inch from the end, and the other on the faced end, 3 32nd of an inch from the outside surface. Bring the tool bit in contact with the corner of the work using the carriage and cross feed hand wheels. You will be taking very light cuts and using a fine feed in this operation. Start to machine the radius by taking fine cuts from the corner as you move the carriage toward the headstock and back the cross feed toward yourself. Complete the radius by machining in the opposite direction. Next move the carriage toward the tailstock and advance the cross feed away from the operator. Continue this machining until you have enough radius surface to check with a radius gauge. Disengage the clutch. And check the shape of the radius with the radius gauge. Light showing under the gauge tells you there are low points. Engage the clutch and continue the machining. By always maintaining a fine continuous chip for each cut, you are better able to control the material removed and thus control the shape of the radius. 
Another check with a radius gauge shows some high points. Remove these by filing. Reset the RPM for filing. This is approximately four times the speed for straight turning. Use a smooth eight or 10 inch mill file and finish the radius to the proper size. The radius gauge shows a 3 32nd inch convex radius. When a job calls for the accurate machining of a concave or convex radius, use the radius attachment method. The radius attachments machines radii on both the curved surface and on the ends of workpieces. We will demonstrate the steps in cutting a two inch convex radius on the faced end of a two inch diameter workpiece. The attachment comes with a set of instructions. It is most important that you follow these directions in order to get the desired radius. Lock the workpiece in the chuck. Set the compound parallel with the ways. And secure the radius attachment on top of it. Select the yoke that is used for machining a two inch radius. Grind a round nose finishing tool bit. Place it in the tool holder. And set it to cut at the center height of the workpiece. Use a depth micrometer to set the tool point to cut a two inch radius. You will find the instructions along with the radius attachment. Set the spindle RPM for a finished machining operation. And engage the clutch. Use the carriage and cross feed hand wheels to bring the radius attachment in a position so that the tool bit just touches the edge of the work. Lock the carriage in place and start the machining by moving the attachment handle. With the handle, guide the tool bit across the end of the workpiece. Use the compound to feed the tool bit into the work. After you have taken a few cuts, disengage the clutch. And check the radius for size with a radius gauge or template. Continue the machining. And check the work periodically until you reach the desired radius. The radius gauge shows a two inch convex radius on the end of the workpiece. Be sure to replace the radius attachment in its case to prevent it from being damaged. You can also machine a concave radius on the end of a workpiece with the radius attachment by following the setup instructions supplied with the attachments. The radius attachment also allows you to machine both concave and convex radii on the curved surface of cylindrical workpieces. Another method of machining a radius on the end of a cylindrical workpiece is called the radius rod method. In this method, cut a rod to the desired radius dimension and place it between the carriage and the headstock for a convex radius. By using the carriage hand wheel to keep a constant pressure on the rod and using the cross feed to move the tool bit across the end of the work, you can trace a semicircular path with the tool bit. You are then able to machine a convex radius. You can machine a concave radius by following the same procedure with one exception. Place the rod between the carriage and the tailstock. The radius rod method is limited in its use because the size of the radius depends on the clearance between the work holding attachments and the rod and tool setup. The compound rest is another method of machining a radius. In this method, use the compound to move the tool bit into the work while slowly swinging an arc to get the desired shape. By moving the carriage into the work, you can arrive at the desired size. 
Like the radius rod method, the compound rest method has size limitations because of the positioning of the tool point in respect to the pivot points. In reviewing the methods of turning a radius on a workpiece, you should be able to describe the procedure for turning concave and convex radii using forming tools, hand manipulation, the radius attachment, the radius rod, and the compound rest. You have been shown five methods of turning concave and convex radii. It takes a lot of practice to be able to perform these accurately and swiftly in the machine shop.